director of Safe Haven, says that getting help through counseling would be one way of coping with the situation of domestic violence. Minister of Education gives update of the naturalization exams and Member of Parliament Duncan proposes roundtable discussion on Kingdom Charter. Those are the headlines for Friday, March the 12th, 2021. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Britain. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast prepared for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the Committee for Constitutional Affairs and Decolonization, the CCAD, held its first committee meeting on Wednesday, the 10th of March, 2021. Chairperson of the committee, MP Ludmila Duncan, requested that the first meeting be closed door in order to discuss the working methods of the committee. In my capacity as chairperson, I presented a proposal on the contextual framework for the committee as well as a proposal to host a roundtable discussion of experts to discuss the democratic deficits in the Kingdom Charter and possible ways forward, stated the MP. Local experts will be invited to present position papers and present their views in Parliament. This would be the first roundtable discussion held in Parliament. No matter what anyone thinks about decolonization, whether we are fully decolonized or not, the committee was established unanimously to deliberate and work on the issues that do exist because of our status as a so-called country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It is also about how we are treated. Another agenda point in the meeting included the 2020 Dutch NGO's contribution pertaining to the 22nd to 24th periodic report on the Kingdom of the Netherlands to the UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination Report by the Dutch section of the International Commission of Jurists, which stated that Kingdom interference in the autonomous matters of the Caribbean countries are in fact interference by the Netherlands and that this historically grown constitutional imbalance upholds racialized discourses and practices. MP Duncan noted that we often do not debate discrimination in the kingdom when it exists systemically. In 2020, legal experts all around the Dutch Caribbean agreed that the conditions for liquidity support and the imposing of a Caribbean reform entity in its original state trampled on our autonomy and in some cases, human rights. We cannot forget that this was and will continue to be the case as long as major democratic deficits exist in the kingdom, added the member of parliament. MP Duncan, during her presentation in the meeting, also called on her colleagues to deliberate on matters at three levels, international, kingdom, and local. A majority in parliament supported the international trajectory towards fixing our democratic deficits with the submission of a petition at the UN. Some are against, and they have a right to be, however, there has also been debate and a lack of action taken at the kingdom level with the kingdom charter being the key instrument in need of reform for some members. And this is the only trajectory that we should be on. This is why I propose the hosting of a round table discussion in parliament with local experts to deliberate possible actions added the MP. Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin have been waiting for a dispute regulation to handle matters of conflict within the kingdom for 10 years. Why hasn't it been finalized as yet? This is why there are different trajectories, and I believe that all are valid at this crucial time in our history. The Member of Parliament looks forward to chairing public meetings of the CCAD and aims to have the committee publish reports within short for public consumption. 
And now in other news, Member of Parliament for the United Democrats, Sarah Westcott Williams, speaking at a press conference on Thursday on the topic of the draft motion which was presented to the United Nations requesting that it investigates violations of a UN mandate right to a full measure of self-government for the people of St. Martin. The Member of Parliament said that she has seen the reaction by some members of Parliament, including the President of Parliament, to the motion of November the 5th, 2020. That motion is what has been used to give the Presidium of the Parliament of St. Martin a free hand in contracting a firm to make a petition such as this on behalf of the people of St. Martin. The Member of Parliament expounded further. I have also seen the reaction by some members of parliament, including the president of parliament, to the motion of November 5th, 2020. Now that motion talks about such things as, and again, I'm not going to go through the whole motion. I encourage everyone to take note of this motion because this motion, of the 5th of November, I believe it was, yes, of the 5th of November 2020, is what has been used to give the Presidium of the Parliament of St. Martin a free hand, a free hand in contracting a firm to then make a petition such as this on behalf of the people of St. Martin. However, this, the motion of Parliament, which I did not support and which I indicated at the time of the motion that this motion would come back to not only bite the parliament, but also the people of St. Martin. So the, the, the presidium of parliament, the chair and vice chairs of parliament took it, firstly, this motion wanted to urge the government of the Netherlands and or the Kingdom of the Netherlands to cease and desist from any actions which conflict with its continued obligations under Article 73 of the UN Charter Law and St. Martin's UN mandated right to a full measure of self-government based on absolute equality within the Netherlands or with the Netherlands rather. And then this motion of November 5th, 2020 continues to endorse the initiative and legal actions of Foundation Pro Sua Liga related to the decolonization of the former Netherlands Antilles, as well as the private initiative in Curaçao with a comparable objective. When the government of St. Martin was negotiating with the Dutch government regarding the liquidity assistance the Dutch government made it clear that the Parliament of St. Martin needed to state its position clearly with respect to one, decolonization, pro Sua Liga Foundation and the like, as well as the matter of the as the matter of what the action was that Pro Sua Liga Foundation was undertaken. The government of St. Martin distanced itself. From, from this action here. Because the drafters and supporters of this motion thought, thought that they were being slick in terms of at the last point, in the last point of this motion, mandating, and this is where it comes in, mandating the chair of parliament to communicate with any and all third parties on its behalf where it concerns all matters related to this motion and its execution. The parliament of St. Martin and the members who drafted and supported this motion, the members who I hope vetted this document need to explain me how we could move from the motion on decolonization and the pro Sua Liga Foundation to a document that accuses the Dutch government of racism and violation of our human rights. And now in news out of the Netherlands, the Dutch government is setting aside another 15.2 million euros for the food aid program on Aruba, Curaçao and St. Martin. 
The residents of the three islands have had to deal with considerable challenges since the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent loss of tourism. The poverty issues have increased considerably on the islands. State Secretary Raymond Knops said that the guiding principle of the government has always been that the Netherlands shall not leave the most vulnerable people in the cold. During my most recent working visit, I experienced how poignant the situation at some locations in our kingdom are. It is of utmost importance that the food aid program is also continued in the coming period. Since May 2020, the Dutch government has made financial resources available for food aid on Aruba, Curaçao and St. Martin. At the moment, a total of approximately 80,000 people receive assistance through food aid made possible by the Netherlands. The Red Cross is coordinating the food aid program. However, hard work is carried out on a transition to a more structural form of the program under the responsibility of the three countries. Through these resources, the food aid is guaranteed to be in effect up to the 1st of July, 20. 21. And still to come, Prime Minister gives update on her meeting with her French counterparts. And I'll have the detail to that story and much more when SXM Daily News returns. Hi, I'm Switch. And I'm Save. And together we're here to tell you about WIB Switch, Switch and Save Mortgage Offer. Now at WIB, you can save and benefit from great specials when you decide to bring your mortgage to WIB. When you switch, WIB will offer you payment of penalty fees up to three months interest, payment of notary fees, waive of bank closing fees, and also the lowest interest rate. Plus, you'll have the chance to win back one year of interest payment. Visit any of WIB's mortgage specialists and benefit from WIB's Switch and hey, 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 that's my part. <clears throat> and save mortgage offer. Wib, your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie Pumpitton. As we continue now in other news, the rise in domestic violence cases have increased on the island and have become worrisome for many, including Safe Haven and the police department. SXM Daily News had the opportunity to talk to the director of Safe Haven, the Shelter for Battered Women, Ms. Vanessa Frazier, who told us that getting help through counseling would be one way of coping with the situation. However, she said that if someone is coming from an abusive relationship, they tend to doubt themselves, and while they are open to healing, the last thing that they want to hear is that they need counseling. Ms. Frazier expounded further. If you are coming from an abusive relationship, yeah, um, you have experienced systemic abuse, this person has been gaslighting you um, to the point that you question your own sanity. You doubt your choices, you doubt your ability to make um, sound decisions. And now here I am telling you that you need a psychologist. This is the last thing that you want to hear basically because um, the first thing that um, comes to your mind is, oh, she is confirming that I'm crazy, right? You can imagine that because, because you're in that relationship. This person is telling you on a daily basis that you're not good enough. Nobody loves you. Um, you can't accomplish anything on your own. Um, this person is telling you, uh, why are you making such a big deal of the fact that I am? Um, I, I, I slap you around uh, two weeks ago. Let, let's move on from that, you know? You well know that you didn't cook that chicken properly. And that's why I had to put you in your place. Those are the kind of, that is the kind of exposure that um, women in abusive situations um, um, receive. So um, while they are open to heal, and um, to pursue the life that they know they are entitled to when it comes to counseling, it's, it's a bit touchy. It's a bit touchy. Now, the thing is this, what I just, I just tell my ladies is that counseling is about getting a better and deeper understanding of oneself. 
Yeah? It draws you closer to understanding your needs and how you can give content to that and put it into action. It helps you to build stronger relationships with those around you. Um, you need a support network, everybody does, regardless of the situation that you're in, but especially if you are in an abusive situation, you need a support network. So counseling is a form of empowerment because you build knowledge. You are educated and it's all about you. Um, the thing is that people are out there pretending to be superior and pretending to have their life together, but everybody can benefit from some counseling. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a matter of, of, of understanding who it is that you are and where it is that you want to go. So we combine that with the workshops that are geared towards self-esteem building and um, especially understanding um, um, gender norms and gender roles um, that is very um, um, dominant in our community. A woman has to be a woman and a man has to be a man. But what does that really mean, a woman being a woman and a man? And who determines that? And we will have more of our interview with the director of Safe Haven, Vanessa Frazier, in Monday's broadcast. Turning now to other news, Minister of Education, the Honorable Rodolph Samuel, speaking at the Council of Ministers weekly press briefing of Wednesday last, expounded on the upcoming naturalization exams and his thoughts on the face-to-face -face learning. The minister was asked by reporters what efforts are being made by the ministry to get teachers back into the classrooms. The minister said that a decision will be made this week. The first part question, I believe we have already indicated that the naturalization exams would have already started in January. I can get to back to you next week in order to, to let you know how far we are with that. The other indications that you are giving of, of persons who are not getting to do the naturalization exams. I would look into that. I will make contact with you in order to get that update on, in, on, this, on out, uh, outside of this forum because it can possibly be personal matters. And then I will take that up with the division that is handling those exams. The other question in regards to face-to-face I remembered that um, your colleague, Dr. Sock, did make a question in regards in that direction uh, in last week press briefing, in which I indicate to him that I would be making a decision this week regarding face to face. And indeed, the decision is being done as we speak. I am busy with it, with the department, in order to decide how we are going to move forward, seeing that the numbers of uh, active cases in the community are very low. I will not give you at this moment, let us say what the answer is, because I did agree with the stakeholders, that is the school boards, that I communicate to them first so that they can be prepared um, into which direction we will go. But by, by the ending of this week, next week, and the beginning of next week, you would know how we are going to do face to face. Now, when you say teachers refuse to go face to face, then that is a whole different type of, um, of information you are bringing forward. Um, the question would then be, um, how, what do you mean that the teacher refused? Did their school manager call them and they say no? Or did they tell you they don't want to go? Uh, teachers refusing and that type of statement is very broad. However, I will look at it. I don't know which teacher, which school board, which school. So it makes it very challenging to handle a question like that. So that question too, I don't mind if we can discuss it uh, after the after the press briefing, in order to get a more precise uh, indication as to 
which school, which school board you're referring to, and then we can uh, look into um, the matter. And the ramping up of the vaccine promotion and the rollout was a topic of discussion with the Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Sylvia Jacobs, at the Council of Ministers' weekly press briefing. The Prime Minister updated reporters on her meeting with her counterparts on French St. Martin on the return of crews and the vaccination rollout. There's another meeting coming up soon. Um, there's a lot of discussions in ways we can collaborate, but I must say the ARS and CPS have been in constant collaboration and discussion. Um, let's say the negative uh, image around taking the vaccination is higher on a friend's side apparently. And so we were having discussions and they are um, looking to collaborate in the communication towards the general public. As you know, um, some media outlets cater to both sides, etc. So they will be expanding the sensitization, the information, because we believe information is power to the population in various languages. That is also being done on the French side. So we're looking at the Creoles, the Spanish, etc., to ensure that a wider range of persons have more information. Um, we believe on the Dutch side, especially, that um, though it's not part of our protocols, I think it's one of the little mistakes we made, that our population looks to its leaders. And um, many are saying, well, if you don't take it, I don't take it, for instance. And I must say that after I took it, several people were then a little more confident about it. We've seen in the United States, the leaders there also were in the first group to take it as a way of encouraging the population as to its safety. Um, again, I've had it. My next um, dosage will be on the 16th, and we are collaborating together with our French counterparts to ensure that we send the, the message out jointly. I really wish that we could have um, adjusted the protocol, but you know, it's not my purview, it's not uh, in my hands. I do allow professionals in the medical field to continue to progress, and of course, the management as well as the providers of the vaccine want to stick to the protocols that were agreed upon initially. So um, I do see that now it's opening up for more persons to take it. So the most we can do is ramp up our promotion, which we are doing. I think you may have noticed already some graphics are coming out. And as more people see the, 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 the injection in the needle going up, I love that graphic using the, the needle itself to show that it's going up people will be encouraged. And as they have family members on the French side, they can then encourage their family members to do the same. And as we turn now to our local COVID update, as of March the 11th, there was one person who tested positive for COVID-19. One person has recovered, causing the total active cases to remain at 16. The total number of confirmed cases is now 2,078. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 14 people in home isolation. Two patients are still hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 27. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin has increased to 2,035. 17 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS. The Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, VSR, the Airport Health Team, in collaboration with the Healthcare Laboratory Services in Martin ACLS, have tested 2,563 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, while CPS has tested 22,027 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. Meanwhile, CPS has also reported that a total of 7,940 persons have registered to be vaccinated. 3,074 vaccines have already been administered and 246 vaccines were administered today. So if you haven't done so already, please register for your vaccine. Also, if you are 60 years or younger using the online registration link or via a paper-based registration form, which can be picked up at several locations. 
including the Collective Prevention Services, CPS, at the Vineyard Office Park Building in Phillipsburg, the Division of Labor Affairs at the Simpson Bay Public Service Center in Simpson Bay, doctor's offices, the Government Administration Building, and select pharmacies. And as we continue to aim towards zero active cases, you are asked to play your part in wearing masks, practice two meter social distancing, sanitize and wash your hands frequently, and remain cautious of large gatherings. Now turning to our weather forecast for March the 12th, 2021, a series of low level troughs may cause some isolated showers during this forecast period. However, the rainfall accumulations are expected to remain minimal due to limited moisture in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, the Atlantic High Pressure Ridge will maintain a light to gentle wind flow. Seas will continue to peak at eight feet particularly along our northern coasts. Consequently, a small craft advisory remains in effect for St. Martin. Small craft operators and sea bathers should continue to exercise caution. So the outlook through Sunday midday, partly cloudy with isolated showers possible. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Nurse Brunilda Illich awarded for her work in nursing and caring. And I'll have the details to that story when SXM Daily News returns. The innovative Banco Matico contactless smart card. Your Banco Medico Smart Card is now equipped with a contactless feature for payments, so get ready to tap and go. Contactless payments are fast, easy, secure, and accepted worldwide at all Maestro-enabled contactless terminals. Tap for transactions equivalent to or less than 100 NAV, or the U.S. dollar equivalent. You will receive notifications via email anytime you tap. Tap, tap, and pay fast, fast with WIB. For more information, visit our website at wib-bank.net. Tap and go with your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News. And in this announcement from GEBE, they are regretting to inform the general public that the water supply to Bay Leaf Tree Drive, Salvation Army, Ray Wa Restaurant, and surrounding areas will be interrupted on Sunday, March the 14th, 2021, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. This outage will allow GEBE to carry out the necessary maintenance to their distribution system. And, of course, they apologize for any inconvenience that this may cause. And now as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening and also this week, celebrating Women's International Day is still on the forefront. As several women were honored by the Prime Minister, including retired nurse and president of the WICUA, the Windward Islands Healthcare Workers Union, Ms. Brunilda Illich, who was given an award of gratitude for her work in nursing and caring. Nurse Illich spoke to SXM Daily News Department. It seems that she went out and she looked for all the sectors on the Dutch side and gave them. I came in from the health sector. It had some more from the health se sector, like VSR, um, CPS. And as I, is one, I am one of the oldest community persons in the health sector, still working with CPS, helping the community. I was honored for Women's Day. I think Women's Day was the 8th of March. So I was told to present myself the following day um, by the administration building. And there is where um, the Prime Minister presented me with a uh, award of gratitude and thanks for doing what I do best. And with that, viewers, it brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening and also this week. 
I am Valerie von Putten, thanking you so much for joining me. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to sinmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you so much for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again on Monday. Do enjoy a safe weekend.